Okay, YouTube, uh, in case my other video doesn't make it to upload, what we're working with here is a uh, um, cheap, uh, usually comes in a box deal, magma. Let me see if I can flip this here. It's a cheap magma, um, mag magnum, magma base. Didn't sound too good. All my wires are coming loose. Okay. So what we're basically working with here is uh, my sister's boyfriend Ed gave me this amp. Um, he bought it new at uh, uh, Mickey Shores and had it installed. And after beating on it a while, it blew up. Now the amp is marketed as a uh, bass amp, obviously. And the first thing I noticed, let's see if we got enough light here, is if you notice, I soldered two wires here, and that's because the amp is actually. Uh, based on the way it's laid out. It's actually a stereo amp and they just gave you the bridged outputs. So the amp's actually stereo. There's the grounds, but they didn't have those hooked up on the stock header that uh, comes out of the side of the amp there. They're capped off. So technically they, they just mark it left and right and it's bridged. Well that's I mean if anybody knows anything about amps, bridging an amp is really not the best thing for the amp because uh, you got to worry about your impedances. If the amp's 4 ohm stable bridge and you want to hook two 4 ohm subs up, which a lot of people do, that'll cause what happened here. So let me get into what I did this mod here. First of all, I noticed that when I opened it. Second of all, I noticed these uh, resistors were uh, brown and burnt. And as soon as I plugged it in, they started heating up to the point you couldn't touch them. I don't know if you can make that out there. but um, So I turned around and I tried something with some extra... Uh, MOSFETs, you can see them. <coughs> uh, MOS panel. I got some P channels, I got some N, N channels, some PMPs, just some various uh, transistors that I uh, that I took out of uh, Herman Cardin amplifier. Um, some of them are out of uh, various other amps. I tested them with a, a regular digital voltmeter. Um, but these were the ones that came out of it. They're cheap, cheap generic um, Korean uh, 50 watt. Uh, Two of them were uh, PNP and two were NPN. So let me go ahead and cut the power to this because um, I just plugged it in to test it. Let me go ahead and grab a screwdriver here. And let me pull these uh, off to show you what I did here. If you noticed where those green um, resistors were, I changed them. These were out of an Alpine, um, which the board totally burnt. So I tested these. They were at 1.9 ohms, the same as the green ones, but they're just a better uh, ceramic uh, style. And if they were in a Jensen, Jensen's a really good brand. So I don't have any power running to this. If you noticed here on the left, uh, the right side here, these are uh, really, really good uh, transistors. They're out of, a, like I said, Herman Carden, or however the hell you pronounce it. But uh, the basic thing that I took into consideration with this experiment... I'm doing a video, baby. Uh, the first thing um, to consider when um, doing anything with MOSFETs is first to determine the type. There's PNP, there's NPN, there's P-channel, there's N-channel, there's uh, different types. But that's only one variation that I've learned with uh, the last amp I fixed with my monoblock. But uh, the, the, the next thing you have to learn, there's three legs on these... Uh, transistors. You got to pull up the, the spec sheet, PDF, what have you, to find out uh, to make sure what what the one you're 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 changing it to has the the basic uh, the base collector emitter and all that is the same. Because if it's not, <laughs> like another experiment I did, you will have uh, a little bit of sparkage going on, and then your project will really be ruined. But this was an experiment. I don't know if this is theoretically correct. Usually, I take uh, like my monoblock, I bought the same chips, special ordered them, and replaced all four of them, and then all all four of the littler one, the drivers. But um, I'm not sure how this is going to come out. But uh, hopefully you can see these are the SK uh, higher. They're 80 watt. Um, I also looked at the specs. Most of the specs are, are give or take a couple. These are a little higher, uh, but the 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 collector and the emitter uh, was pretty much the same. So let's go ahead and hook her up. And uh, I gotta grease these and whatnot. But again, this is a cheap amp that was given to me, blown. Um, when I did take it apart, I noticed I was getting one channel on on this side. And uh, doing a simple, basic test with my digital voltmeter, I had determined that one 
of the, I think it was the PMP transistor. And what was funny is when I took the bad one out and was running with just one on the on this side here, the unit was actually playing, but it sounded like shit. So I went ahead and stuck these in here. Um, and I'm new to the amp, uh, new to repairing amps. I'm not a professional, but I, I got a little bit of the understandings. Basically, doing a lot of research and stuff on them, and actually doing a little hands-on experiments, blowing shit up. That's the best way to go. You got an old amp laying around. Uh, I can say the experiment, but. Um, I just thought it was a cool little amp, and I was looking for another amp when I when I got this. I was originally looking for another amp because I started doing uh, multiple uh, amps in the car. One for the sub, the mono block. I, I got a 927 Kenwood for the fronts. I got an old acoustic that I repaired for the bet for the rears, which I had the gain turned down on it. But so I'd like to use this one for the tweeters, which you know I think it's like 250 times one because that's all they rated it at originally. But you can take, like I said, these two are ground, and solder you some wire to it, drill a hole through the little plastic, which I'm going to do. I'll show it to you when it's all done, a picture, or what have you. But uh, I got a little Kenwood hooked up here. This was in my car, but it doesn't have the built-in crossovers that I was looking for. So let's go ahead and run our power back. And there we go. And we'll first put it at, like, high pass. Get set here. I have no power. Yes, I do. Hmm. Technical difficulty. Okay, here. This is the positive. So this would be the the left channel. And we're just using a little Welcome to my little sanctuary. The custom. So that's our left channel. That's our right channel. So now the amp is actually running stereo. That's full. I know it sounds like shit because the speaker's small. And that's a low pass. You can hear it rumbling there. So basically this amp was dead. Um, and like I said, I don't know if it's theoretically correct. Uh, putting higher power MOSFETs, but it can be done. This is proof. Uh, See how high we can get the vocals to scream. Includes my YouTube video. Okay, this is the amp partially put back together. You look on the right here. You can actually see the uh, the way I did the wires. And if you notice now, you can probably better see the. Uh, where it's a speaker plus and negative. But now it is a stereo amp. i got to put the bottom on, on there yet. There's where I soldered him in. Last but not least, she's back together. I did drop uh, two speakers up. So I'm driving two speakers to make sure. And I took that crappy blue thing off. I'm probably going to put my own make something fancy to put on there. But let's... But I ain't talk about Homer Chick so bad the whole crew wanna blow her My chick bang it, yeah. my chick good hey. My chick do stuff that she chick that she could hey. My chick bang it,